Here is how I set up my Google Pixel 8 Pro from my home screen down to even some of my most used apps that few people know exist. Now I was lucky enough to receive the Pixel 8 Pro from Made by Google, so a huge thanks to them. And the first thing I did once I took it out of the uh, special content creator box was to increase the screen resolution. I guess out the gate, this phone is set to 1080p, which can save a good amount of battery life, but oh man, this beautiful display deserves to run at quad HD resolution. From there, I got to work on my home screen and I came up with this. A very simple setup that is still very informative on the stock Pixel launcher. The idea was to have it provide me with everything I need while still keeping that beautiful material you look. You can even recreate this on any Android using Nova Launcher. Now the at a glance widget at the top is my proudest accomplishment because it's been modified to provide me with even more helpful information. For example, it now lets me keep track of how many YouTube subscribers I have. It lets me stay on top of my favorite stocks or cryptocurrencies, brings up my most used notes from Google Keeps, tracks any Amazon orders I place, pops up my music info whenever I play music in the background, and more. It even works within the lock screen and appears on the always on display too. How is this possible? Well, I downloaded a newly released app called Smart Spacer. It's not on the Play Store, but you can download it off this Discord channel, which I'll link right below the like button. Within Smart Spacer, there are 20 different plugins that you can download to add to the at a glance. It's mostly Google apps, but it also carries some other popular third party ones like Yahoo Sports, Uber, Samsung Health, and Pokemon Go. It even has a plugin for the Tasker app, so you can basically program Smart Spacer to show off anything you'd like. And for those wondering, it doesn't require root, works on both Pixel and non Pixel phones, and just requires the Shizuku app to get it working. If you're unsure how to use Shizuku, I'll drop a video tutorial within the iCards. Plus, if you're on a Pixel phone, Smart Spacer even keeps the original at a glance widget on the Pixel launcher, so there's no reason not to use it. Okay, now aside from that awesome modification, I decided to choose this background that I grabbed from an app called Team Pixel Wallpapers. The picture is called Feature Drop 70, and I love everything about it. The colors are very calm, the different stacked shapes on top of each other add a bit of fun and excitement, and the rest of the wall is very spacious, giving room to the rest of my widgets and icons on the home screen. Even the colors match the blue tone of my phone, which is nice. There's also a dark version of the same wallpaper if you'd prefer that instead, or if you like even better alternatives, we created these other walls that fit nicely with this same setup. Each one still follows that pixel theme, has different stacked shapes, colors, and is still really eye-catching. To get them, just join my Patreon link down below. As for the widgets, I only chose those that provided me with information that my at-a-glance widget didn't already provide. For instance, since my modified at-a-glance no longer shows me the date, I got a 4x1 calendar widget, which also lets me quickly open the calendar app. I even like that it's slim enough to tuck right underneath those shapes and that it's adaptive to match the exact colors of my wallpaper. I grabbed it from an app called Combine, and inside it the widget is called Calendar Bar 4x1. There are a ton of other pixel inspired widgets inside this pack, so definitely make sure to go through it if you want an alternative widget. The only thing to keep in mind is that it does cost a dollar to install, and it requires you to have the KWGT apps installed as well, more specifically the KWGT Custom Widget Maker app and the Pro Key. So download those two extra apps and you should be good to go. I also tweaked the widget within its global settings by changing the colors and repositioning it to get it to fit more nicely on my home screen. So if you're using the same wallpaper I have and prefer the widget to be darker, go with Style 2. Or if you'd like something a bit lighter, you can go with a custom color. But before I move on, I wanted to shout out UPDF for sponsoring this video. I like to use UPDF instead of Adobe Acrobat as my main PDF reader and editor. Now they did sponsor this video, but I genuinely love using their app because it has a plethora of incredible features with a user-friendly interface. It lets me effortlessly annotate PDFs, preserves their original format while making edits, convert files, and I can use its powerful optical character recognition tool to extract text from images, or even make them searchable. They even just released a new feature that lets you create dynamic fillable and non-fillable forms, which is extremely useful if you're sharing it with someone else. The best part is that UPDF seamlessly integrates with AI, even on Android, letting me perform mind-blowing tasks like summarizing, explaining, translating, 
and enhancing your content. In terms of pricing, UPDF outshines the competition. It's a whopping 12% of Adobe Acrobat's price, and it even offers a perpetual plan, something that Adobe doesn't even consider. But here's the kicker. A single UPDF license covers all your devices, which is truly unbeatable. So if you want to get the most bang for your buck, UPDF is the way to go. And as if the offer couldn't get any better, I'm throwing in an extra discount on the UPDF Pro and AI package, plus a chance to win the iPhone 15, AirPods, free orders, and more. So you better act fast so you don't miss out on this amazing deal. Anyway, below that calendar widget, I have two separate folders, one for my Google Apps and another for my social media. That's how I've always had it. Most of them are also automatically themed by Google's themed icons. If you'd like to replicate these icons on another third-party launcher, I recommend you download Dynamic Material U Icon Pack or Pix Material U Light Slash Dark. Both these icon packs will give you the same themed icons that Google uses on its stock launcher. And they're even adaptive to your wallpaper and can be darkened. On my dock, I have five of my most used apps, the phone, Google Messages, the camera, Gmail, and Chromite. Not Chrome, Chromite. Oh, more on that in a minute. And then at the very bottom, I have the stock Google search bar. If you'd like to replicate this search bar on another launcher, you can download this app called Pixel Search, which works and looks the same way. Now moving on to the next screen, I decided to throw up a fitness widget and a music player. The one at the top is a 4x1 widget from an app called Uzuri 2. It shows me how many steps I've walked, and then if I tap it, it'll let me know the distance I've walked, my inactive calories for the day, and my average steps for that week. Down below, I went with one of my own widgets from my Patreon. It's a new one that we just released that looks really nice. It gives you everything you need to control your music, and I love how it shows off the album cover with a faint background. I even tried to make it match the blue tone like all of my other widgets. But if you'd prefer an alternative, my team also made this second music player widget that looks extremely similar to this background. Again, both can be found on my Patreon. And that's my entire home screen setup. Now let's go over some of my favorite apps that I usually install whenever I switch phones. I'm going to skip all the boring ones like Instagram, Twitter, etc. I'll just be showing off the apps that most people don't know about but are extremely useful. Starting with Chromite, I use this browser instead of Chrome because it looks and works just like it, but it removes all those unnecessary trackers, privacy invasive features, and all that extra junk that Google Chrome packs. Hell, it even comes with a powerful ad blocking engine to stop every ad on most websites. The only string attached is that it's not on the Play Store, but you can download it off GitHub. I also like to install custom tiles for my quick settings whenever I switch phones. The first one I always download is Calentile because it can quickly show me my next upcoming calendar event. And when I tap it, it brings up a menu that lets me get even more details about it or even lets me see other upcoming events. Another custom tile that I love to use is Undo Notification. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Whenever I accidentally dismiss a notification, I can tap on this Undo tile to bring it back. It's as simple as that, and it's a lifesaver. I also usually download this app called Crab Hands because it lets me link my Spotify account and shows me any new albums and songs that get released by the artists I follow. I know Spotify does this already, but Crab Hands takes it a step further by automatically creating a playlist and updating it anytime a new song gets dropped by any artist I like. That way, I can listen to all the new music immediately without jumping from album to album. Moving on, Dashlane is my favorite password manager. I've been using it for years. I know there are probably better ones out there, but this one works just fine for me and has never given me any problems. Now, being that I install a crap ton of apps, you would think that I would get bombarded with a ton of unnecessary notifications. But I actually don't because I use Daywise to stop them all. I've been using it for years, and how it works is it lets me choose the most important apps that I want to continue to instantly send me notifications, while every other app gets batched at various times throughout the day. That way, I can glance at all those unnecessary notifications later on when I'm not busy. The only annoyance is that Daywise is pretty pricey, so that's the only downside. I also use Droidify, which is a fork to F-Droid. If you're unsure what F-Droid is, it's basically a whole new app store that only carries free and open source applications, most of which you can't even find on the Play Store, 
Androidify just gives the interface a material you uplift. So it's a must have. Anyway, another awesome app I downloaded on my Pixel 8 Pro is Magnet X because it lets me easily find and download torrents without needing to go on any sketchy website. It's a very powerful search engine and it's completely free to use. I'm not even sure how it's on the Play Store, but it is. Instead of Telegram, I use Nicogram. It uses the same API, but carries a few extra features of its own. For example, unlike Telegram, I can change the emoji pack, the action when double tapping any message, decrease the sticker size, and more. I can even customize a ton more little things than if I were just using Telegram. I also use an app called Noti Progress Bar, which if you caught my last video on the best Android apps of October, you know that it's a great way to seamlessly follow the progress of anything you download right around the camera hole punch. It's super seamless. Whenever I need to transfer files between my phones or desktop, Push Bullet has always been there for me. It lets me transfer anything I like, no matter how big or small it is. And it even syncs my messages and notifications to my desktop. The only downside is that its UI is pretty outdated, but its functionality still works beautifully on any phone I use, except for the iPhone. Even though Reddit killed off most of its third-party apps back in June, Relay for Reddit has still been going strong, so I've been using that. The only downside is that it now requires you to get a page subscription to use it, but I think it's worth it because it just makes Reddit a lot more user-friendly, removing all those unnecessary promoted posts and making everything feel a lot less cluttered. Retora was another great app I installed on my Pixel 8 Pro, which I also featured in the best apps of October. Basically, it solves a specific issue that Google Maps has had for a while. Whenever you add multiple stops to your destination, Google Maps doesn't always find you the fastest route, making you drive all over the map. So with Retora, I can add every stop into the app and it will automatically organize them to create the fastest path. It honestly has saved me so much time. Another app I like to use is Rootboot because whenever I need to do something important or remind myself about something, I can just stick a note or a to-do list within my notification panel to access it anytime throughout the day or until I dismiss it. Of course, it lets me pin a bunch of other things too, but that's how I use it. Simple login is my secret weapon whenever I need to share my email address with a newsletter or if I'm signing up for anything because it lets me create fake email addresses which I can hand out like candy. Then any emails that are sent to them will be automatically forwarded to my real inbox. That way, if I want to stop receiving emails from those newsletters one day, I can simply turn them off with a switch. Pretty darn useful, and it's free and open source too. Finally, I always make sure to install XS Camera because it lets me secretly record a video even when the screen is locked. Or even when I'm using my phone, I can still record in the background and see the preview with a small camera window. Luckily, I never needed to use it, but you just never know when you might need to. Anyway, that's how I set up my Google Pixel 8 Pro. Click this video right here to see what extra Android settings I disabled within it for extra security, privacy, and extra useful features. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you found this video to be helpful, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!